Okay. So welcome to the uh, next class on the topics from Srimad Bhagavatam. Again, the intent is to keep everybody inspired and connected in Krishna consciousness. So today we will be concluding the topic that we began, which is the history of Parikshit Maharaj. And hopefully we can start with the topic of the history of uh, Sukadev Goswami, the speaker of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So we talked about listener and the speaker. But anyway, before we get started, let us uh, uh, recite uh, the Mangalacharan prayers, which are given at the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, as it is in the introduction section, Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, and then we will recite the verses for Srimad Bhagavatam. This is to invoke and invite and request the mercy of the previous Acharyas so that we can uh, read and understand the Srimad Bhagavatam and these wonderful topics very nicely through their blessings and through their mercy. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dinabandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Now we will recite the verses for the uh, the important verses which we already discussed one time in the first class. So these are the, are you seeing uh, the screen here? Okay, great. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udhirayet Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nandanayacha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai. Last time we had a computer crash. So we will uh, restart the discussion. Last uh, five, ten minutes when we started the discussion about the appearance uh, or the curse on Shukadev Goswami. So today will be a very uh, uh, sort of a mainly a storytelling session. So and a lot of learnings as well, but uh, uh, not very uh, heavy on philosophical discussion. So all of uh, the children and others must uh, or would like it, I hope. So um, Let's see. One second. 
second. Okay. <coughs> so uh, we had discussed about, uh, let me maybe, uh, you know, remember that famous picture uh, I'm not going to show it and spend time today. We have less time. We still have to end at 7.30 Pacific time. So we have about 50 minutes, 5.0. And there's a long story to tell. So, uh, and again, you know, uh, before we start, please find a nice quiet place. Turn on your video if you can, you know. Uh, it's, it makes a more personal experience uh, for me to see you and you to see me. I mean, you can see me because my camera is on. So if possible. Anyway, so last time we stopped at, uh, uh, or we discussed how uh, Parikshit Maharaj was born. That was a long story that we discussed after the Mahabharat war, how Lord Krishna saved Parikshit Maharaj when he was in the womb of his mother Uttara. And we also discussed one very beautiful thing is that why his name is Parikshit. His name is Parikshit because he saw Lord Krishna while he was in the womb when he was protected by Lord Krishna. And then when, when he took birth and when he was growing up, he was trying to find Lord Krishna in everyone. Uh, that is this person Lord Krishna? Is this person Lord Krishna? So he would examine or inspect everyone. But the main point is not that he was examining or inspecting. By the way, that's the why, reason his name became Parikshit because he would take like a Pariksha exam or inspection. That's the root word Pariksha. That's why his name is Parikshit. But the important point is that his consciousness was always fixed on Krishna. Everywhere he was trying to find Krishna. That is the most important quality of Maharaj Parikshit. So he was a perfectly Krishna conscious person. And uh, like that, uh, you know, and then he ruled as a very, very able king. And now we see how he uh, got cursed. So his... When he was born, the sages foretold all the glories of Parikshit Maharaj, including his death. Everybody has to die. So, you know, we all think that, uh, uh, you know, uh, death by, you know, if I die when I'm 100 years old, sleeping in my, when I'm sleeping, I just pass away. That's called death. And that is something when, you know, everybody can feel satisfied and, and uh, um, you know, uh, that's a good kind of death. Any other kind of death is bad. If it's an accident, if it is, you know, untimely, if it is uh, due to some disease, we all want to live 100 years and then peacefully die in our sleep. Not everybody gets that. So, and there may be many other, we will see here, uh, how devotees of Lord, how pure devotees, bhakta of the Lord, he receives or he accepts death. Everybody has to die and there are various ways in which one can die. So it was foretold that he will be, uh, he will die out of a curse. Uh, and uh, we, will, we will discuss that story. So one time, so here, here's the story that starts, and this is in the 18th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto. Canto 1, chapter uh, 18 is the chapter. So if, and today we will be mainly discussing topics from chapter 18 and chapter 19. So just in case if you are, uh, you know, um, interested to read more details or more, uh, uh, nectar, more uh, wonderful description by our Acharyas, look at these two chapters, chapter 18 and 19 of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And I hope all of you know how to find Srimad Bhagavatam. You can find it on the internet at vedabase.io. Also, if you type in vedabase.com, it redirects to vedabase.io and there you go and click on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1 and then chapters 18 and 19. We have shown that many, many times. So the story uh, of Maharaj Parikshit's sort of last few days starts like this, that one time he was in the forest and he was going around in the forest and uh, chasing a deer. 
and he became very very hungry and thirsty he became so hungry and so thirsty that he was he was becoming vyakul he was becoming completely distraught and he was searching for water and he saw this uh, uh, hermitage ashram of a sage and the name of that sage is shamika rishi so he was a very very uh, advanced stay, uh, sage very highly accomplished at a very high level and when parikshit maharaj uh, entered the ashram he saw the sage in a complete state of trance uh, what is known as the state of samadhi so he was meditating on on the supreme absolute truth on the paramatma and that sage was com- completely unaware of his surroundings so uh maharaj parikshit you know first of all was hungry thirsty of course maharaj parikshit knew how to respect a sage what by just by looking at a sage he could know that this is a very advanced stage but when these material conditioning takes over even temporarily that uh, wisdom uh, sometimes becomes diluted so at that moment he had a temporary loss or lapse lapse is a better word a temporary lapse of his wisdom and uh, so anyway so before that lapse will come so he asked for water and the sage was not the rishi shamika rishi was not moving in the uh, shrimad bhagavatam it is uh, written that the stage of samadhi so he was alive now what are the three stages of when we are alive either we are dead or we are alive correct when we are alive there can be three stages of our sort of beingness either we are awake or we are sleeping or we are unconscious okay like you know when you're on the in the surgery room you the doctor makes you unconscious or some you know reasons make you unconscious so parikshit maharaj detected that the sage is alive but he is in neither of the three stages so he should have known that he is in a stage of samadhi but he asked him for water and he got no response and in that moment he had a temporary lapse of judgment and uh, the conditioning that took over was the following as it is explained in the bhagavatam that this is the conditioning you know we are all in bhagavad gita we have heard about our long time of conditioning the kings are conditioned by their constant hearing of sweet words by others respect honor and offerings everybody does these things to a king they offer things to the king they respect the king they honor the king they do these things so the king becomes conditioned he becomes um uh, uh, used to these kind of things and he didn't get that from the shamika rishi from the shamika rishi so he became a little bit uh, upset or agitated and um or he felt neglected and in that momentary uh state of anger he wanted to get back at the sage so he looked around and he saw a dead snake and he took that dead snake and put it around the neck of uh of the rishi okay so just like that you know momentary you know anger and it is written in the shrimad bhagavatam that he did this because his hunger and thirst at that moment was unprecedented it had never happened so much um i am forgetting the word that was there in the shrimad bhagavatam a very strong word was there that uh, unprecedented was the sort of the translation uh, what's the hindi of un- unprecedented uh, there was that anyway we can look at it uh, later so it was he was he was basically you know the point i'm trying to make is that he definitely deserved a, a you know a 
some uh, he de deserved some um, you know um, you know what, uh, some benefit of doubt not benefit of doubt but he deserved some leniency because he was so um, he was so hungry and so thirsty so the point is that to show that it was not that Parikshit Maharaj was a bad person, but the situation was so unprecedented that, uh, you know, these kind of lapses happen even to the most controlled person. So the learning here for us is very important. The learning for us is that we should be very careful as well when such an accomplished person like Parikshit Maharaj, who was completely Krishna conscious, when such lapses can happen for them, for, for such people, what to speak about us? Of course, it took a lot of things, a lot of, you know, hunger, thirst, and, and a lot of things had to happen for him to become agitated. But we become agitated much sooner. So, but still, even they get agitated, even they have lapses. So we have to be so careful about our behavior. Anyway, now comes... Srimad Bhagavatam is teaching us. Again, Srimad Bhagavatam is all about teaching us um, uh, how to live our life as per the principles of Bhagavad Gita and gives us all these beautiful, wonderful examples of other devotees uh, of how they lived their lives according to the Bhagavad Gita. So, or the teachings in the Bhagavad Gita. So one of the things that we have learned in the Bhagavad Gita is that, yes, even if very advanced, very high level of devotees, if they do, if they commit any mistake, the first thing they do is repentance. So there is some amount, there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, repentance or uh, the feeling of so uh, 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 feeling sorry about it. So when Maharaj Parikshit was returning from that ashram, he thought, that, you know, oh, I have committed a very, you know, uh, uncivilized act. And he thought in that moment, he realized that he thought that the sage was just acting. He was just trying to act as if he's in meditation so that he does not have to serve the king, offer water to the king or, you know, do whatever, you know, honor the king. He tried to avoid it. That's what he thought that that was his thinking when he met the or he went into the ashram. And then he thought, I shouldn't have thought like that. Maybe he was actually meditating. Maybe he was really in a trance. And I misjudged that he is just acting. And he felt really sorry about his, uh, about his action. We will see that a little later. Now the scene changes from Parikshit Maharaj. So this is how Parikshit Maharaj. Now he's returning from the ashram to... Uh, to his uh, palace. Now, after committing such a deed, now his mind is now focused on his uh, laps. Now, thunder, uh, hunger and thirst has gone away because the mind has changed. Now, he's only focusing on, oh my God, what have I done? What will be the reaction? So, his mind got, so all these hunger, thirst are all state of mind. If something more uh, important takes over, then these little things like hunger and thirst, sometimes then we forget. And I, I'm sure you have seen these things in your life as well. So, uh, so now the scene shifts to the sage, back to the sage and not to the sage only, but to his son. So he had a son. Uh, if I'm not wrong, and maybe somebody can correct me, uh, the name of the son was Shringi, I think. Um, but, you know, I'm not very good with names, but yes. So that son yes, was very really powerful because he was, you know, learning from his father. <laughs> so he had learned some mantras and uh, one of the mantras that he had learned is how to curse someone, how to give a shrap, a curse to someone. So he got very angry and he cursed. He took some water from the river where he was and uh, he, he berated this politi politician class, these political people, they are, they are like dogs. You know, we are the Brahmanas. These are people, these kings and politicians are like dogs. They are supposed to serve the Brahmanas. 
how come they disrespect the brahmanas they are supposed to be like dogs how and we are the masters how can the dog you know uh, eat on the same table as the master this was this was the way he was thinking the the son and he got very angry he got very angry at parikshit maharaj he took some water uh, and cursed him that i curse you to die in 7 days out of a uh, the bite of a very very powerful and very venomous very poisonous snake so uh like that he he um he cursed and he he said you know uh after lord krishna has left the planet this is what is happening to the world these political people are destroying the world such such bad politicians and kings have become he did not know so this is his immaturity and we will see how shami karishi you know chastises him he scolds his son what have you done we will see that maharaj parikshit is not a, like some of the you know bad politicians like uh, you know there have been bad politicians they had seen bad politicians like dhritarashtra very bad king his son he was blind not only he was blind physically he was mentally blind uh and uh, his son duryodhan was basically running the whole show um uh, so uh, uh even he was such a you know we all know duryodhan such a such a evil minded person so they had seen these kind of things uh but he did not know parikshit maharaj was a complete opposite he was such a nice king but anyway he went and cursed and when that uh, boy shringi he returned to the ashram uh, and he saw his father and he saw that snake on the he heard the story that this is what happened to your father then he got mad but then when he finally returned to the ashram he saw his father who was still in the trance because he doesn't know what's happening snake has been put on the neck or anything you don't have any feeling you know he was in a complete state of samadhi and his son started you know shouting loudly and crying and you know what has happened you know he was still in a state of uh, very anger and uh, all that and that made the rishi come out of the stage of samadhi and then he opened his eyes and he saw you know there's a snake around me okay so he threw the snake away you know it's a little snake and then he asked why are you crying what happened why are you you know uh, so upset and uh, then uh, his son explained him what all happened and uh, then the sage said oh my god what have you done what have you done such a great sin you have done he said that uh, maharaj parikshit you don't know who is maharaj parikshit he was not the uh, sort of the uh cause of kalyuga not the cause but uh, like a he is not a manifestation or he is not one of those kind of kings that is going to be there in kalyuga he was trying to keep kalyuga away he was trying to protect all of us the whole kingdom from kalyuga what have you done he is such a dharmic king and he said that maharaj parikshit was the greatest human being nara indram so he was that's the word used in sanskrit narendram narendram means nara indram a human like indra so um uh, if you you know uh, um, think about it uh, parikshit maharaj is in the lineage of indra he is uh, you know arjuna is indra's son uh, and arjuna's son is uh, abhimanyu and uh, abhimanyu's son is um parikshit maharaj so he is in so narendra and he said that punishment should be commensurate with the offense you know if you you don't if somebody like steals uh, 5 dollars you you don't go and uh, kill him you know maybe you you give him a penalty of uh, 25 dollars or maybe you know some whatever the punishment has to be uh, aligned with the kind of the sin so this small sin he committed and your punishment to curse him to die is completely completely 
um, unwarranted and it is very, very wrong. He chastised him. He scolded him. He told him that you are completely immature. You're such an immature boy. What have you done? And um, again, he says he was Nara Devam. He was the Devas, like a Nara in, you know, like a demigod, like a Devata he is, uh, Parikshit Maharaj. And you have been very unwise in the use of your power. And not only that, he's a great human being. He's a Mahabhagavata. That's what Shamikarishi calls him, a first class devotee. Mahabhagavata is the word that he uses uh, uh, to describe Parikshit Maharaj. Bhagavata means, we say Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya in the verse that we read. Bhagavata Seva means Seva or uh, service to the book Bhagavatam and to the person Bhagavata. Bhagavata means a devotee of the Lord. Mahabhagavata means a great devotee of the Lord. So Parikshit Maharaj is a Mahabhagavata, he says. And he says, now by cursing him to die, you have brought on Kalyuga more quickly. He was trying to push out Kalyuga. You have brought it on more. The full onslaught of Kalyuga will now be upon us. And for all this, the sin will be on us, father and son. We will be held responsible for the faster onset of Kalyuga. So like this, he was... Uh, he was berating his son completely. And, uh, but finally, you know, now this is a, another thing that we learned. Uh, they come, the sages, he was, it was like a controlled anger on his son. So he was not, he didn't lose control. He didn't go and curse his son. Oh, you die in seven days. That's like a chain effect, you know, like cars on the road, you know, one car hits the other, then the other car hits in the back and you have, uh, you know, a chain of, uh, uh, rear end collisions. So it was not like that. He, on the contrary, prayed to the Lord, please forgive my son. So even though his son had committed a great sin, he asked for the Lord's forgiveness. Not because he was his son. It's not like you're trying to pardon your family members. We see those kind of things only today. But uh, that was a genuine act of forgiveness uh, towards another human being who happened to be his son. And then comes a very, 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 very beautiful verse. And this has a lot of learning for all of us. So we will uh, uh, read this verse. Let us see. And then this is, this is a sort of a hard hitting verse uh, in, in, in this whole chapter. Very hard hitting. So let us see that. The, the level of tolerance of devotees. How much should a devotee of the Lord tolerate? What is the extent of tolerance? If somebody abuses you, should you tolerate? If somebody hits you, should you tolerate? To what extent should devotees of the Lord tolerate? In Bhagavad Gita, we talk so much about tolerance. We just completed 12th chapter and the last several verses are uh, at a lot of places there is tolerance. So I will share my screen and this is a beautiful verse from Srimad Bhagavatam and this is Srimad Bhagavatam as I said we are reading chapter 18 canto 1 that is the that's how we read this SB stands for Srimad Bhagavatam short form 1 stands for canto 1 dot 18 means 18th chapter and dot 48 means 48th verse. So this is canto, chapter, verse. Okay. And the verse goes like this. Tiraskrita vipralabdha shapta kshipta hata api nasya tat pratikurvanti tad bhakta prabhavo apihi. So the translation is that the devotees of the Lord are so forbearing that even though they are defamed. So look at the uh, conditions here. Defamed, cheated, cursed, disturbed, neglected, or even killed. They are never inclined to avenge themselves. 
So to what extent can the devotees go? So tad bhakta, the bhaktas of the Lord, to what extent should or uh, should they go? So tiraskara, if you see here, the first word is tiraskrita. Tiraskrita means to be uh, insulted or tiraskar karna. That is, you know, we all understand what is tiraskar. And that is the level of uh, experience uh, that the son of the sage experienced, tiraskar. Maharaj Parikshit has done some tiraskar uh, of uh, the Rishi. That's all he did. Next are much higher. Vipralabdha means being cheated. So a lot of people ask in the Bhagavad Gita class, oh, how is it okay if we get cheated? Uh, why should we tolerate it? How to, you know, all those kind of things. But devotees of the Lord, their focus is Krishna consciousness, not about whether I got cheated. Yes, sometimes you may get cheated. Srila Prabhupada was, uh, you know, in his life before. Now devotees don't tolerate the cheating towards Krishna. So when somebody tried to cheat for Krishna, there was this, you know, Prabhupada was trying to build a temple and the person who had agreed to sell the land, he took the money, but then refused to sign the papers to transfer the land. So Prabhupada, you know, was, you know, very strongly and very vigorously fought the, the, the case and, and the court case and all that. And ultimately Lord Krishna intervened. Uh, and, uh, you know, Srila Prabhupada was able to build a huge temple in, uh, this is in Juhu, Bombay, what is known as the Hare Krishna land. You can read Srila Prabhupada Leenamrit about it. But so for Krishna, you should not accept the cheating. If you are working and somebody is trying to cheat Krishna, but for their own personal material uh, uh, property, they never care because their focus is Krishna. Their focus is not, oh, my property got taken. I was insulted. I was cheated. I was neglected. Or even I was killed. So they don't care about any of these things, even though, and, and this is not uh, there in the translation here directly, but Tad Bhakta Prabhavo Apihi, this Prabhavo Apihi means that even though the devotees are very powerful, they can take revenge, but they choose not to. Why waste our time in doing all this act of revenge and all and spoil our own consciousness? We should, devotees should always focus on Krishna. Material things keep coming and keep going. And we will see another very important verse a little later. Okay. So I hope this verse was very inspiring for you. For me, this verse was extremely inspiring. That this is the level of tolerance that Shamika Rishi tells his son. This is the level of tolerance you should have. Okay. So try to build some, you know, it will take a long time to build this level. Try something, try, uh, you know, uh, saints should uh, try to, or people who are trying to become saintly should learn to stay calm. And you can try in very simple situations. Many, many years ago, I was uh, in some different class. And one person said that he and his wife used to fight a lot. I'm just giving an example of, of what you can start from. Um, and of course, in this example also, the insult was very minor. It was not like Parikshit Maharaj went and, uh, you know, hurt Shamikarishi or, or punched him or, or, you know, killed him. Nothing like that. Just put a snake around his, a dead snake around his neck. That's all he did. So this person said he fights, has a lot of fights with his wife. And the reason is, you know, this was South Indian person. So they, South Indians, as you know, like curd rice. And with curd rice, one of the most important things with curd rice is pickle. So he said, my wife always puts pickle on top of the curd rice. Whereas I want it on the side in the plate. I have told her thousands of times to put the pickle on the side and she always puts it on the top. And that was the biggest problem in his life. He said, so such a simple thing, you know, you cannot tolerate then, you know, so, so start there, start there. I think it is very easy to start there. Okay. 
if somebody has uh, you know done something really bad like cheated you in your property or you know taken your job or done something much bigger fine you can get agitated but if your wife is putting your pickle here or there one can start the tolerance practice of tolerance from such places very nice places to start tolerance so uh so like this shamikarishi explained to his son now we will shift our attention to back to parikshit maharaj what is going on there so shamikarishi chastised scolded his son finally forgave him and gave him some nice instructions that you must learn to tolerate then on the side of parikshit maharaj so now we see what's going on in that scene so parikshit maharaj again is in the feeling of repentance he is very sad and he uh, was thinking i have committed a heinous crime i have committed a very uncivilized act completely not befitting uh, my uh, beliefs and my principles and he was saying i must get some reaction so he was he was expecting not only expecting he was wanting a reaction and he said that let the calamity come right now because i want to be free of this feeling of of uh, repentance of so much uh, glani is the word that is used so much guilt he says let me have the calamity let me suffer and so that i can you know uh, my my mind can be free see this is the character of parikshit maharaj and he even said so even this is the nature of devotees for small uh, things they want a lot of uh, reaction for for small bad thing that they do so he said let all my strength be finished let me lose all my wealth all my strength my whole kingdom let everything be lost for this uh, sinful act that i have committed and then he got the news from one of his uh, the news travels fast and of course you know he is the king so the news reached him that you have been cursed and you are going to die in 7 days out of a snake bite so what what was his reaction so this is another learning point what is the reaction of a devotee uh when he is in the situation like parikshit maharaj and he has got the news that he is going to die so he didn't start you know blaming the rishi oh this is very unfair what did i do i didn't do anything why are you nothing like that and of course he accepted it he accepted the curse and he said okay good i am very happy that this happened to me he is you know he accepted it as good news and the biggest reason this is beautiful part in the in the verse let me show this verse i don't have a slide for it but uh, i can show from the veda base but it's a very very nice and sweet verse and it's already 713 so let's see hmm uh share screen okay so as you can see this is vedabase.io so even if you go to vedabase.io and you hit enter you will reach here and this is how you navigate into shrimad bhagavatam here you will find bhagavad gita as the first book and shrimad bhagavatam as the second one you click on that you go to canto 1 that's where we are and now by the way the when the scene changed to parikshit maharaj the chapter changed from 18 to 19 i forgot to tell you that so we are in the 19th chapter the appearance of shukadev goswami and we will go into the fourth verse verse number 4 of the 19th chapter so again as you see sb 1.19.4 that's how we call it and we'll just for sake of time we will just uh focus on the english 
while the king was thus repenting he received news of his imminent death which would be due to the bite of a snake bird uh, occasioned by the curse spoken by the sage's son the king accepted this as good news and here is the most important part of this verse for it would be the cause of his indifference towards worldly things and you can translate the indifference as you can see here the word is virakti virakti means detachment another uh, translation is detachment so he said okay good so this is how devotees take any kind of bad news at a material level that okay good i am freed from this attachment good this has happened now i don't have to worry about it let me focus this is an opportunity for me to focus on krishna good that this thing that i was attached to has been taken away so in parikshit maharaj's case he what is being taken away not just his wealth not just his kingdom or strength but his whole life is going to get taken away and he basically means everything that he's attached to at the material level is going to get taken away and he said okay great i am getting this opportunity to get detached from everything at the material level so thank you he kind of feels happy with that so the one must learn here how devotees take bad news at a material level bad news and this is the worst news this is like a death sentence sometimes doctors you know give death sentence to to people oh you know 7 days or 1 month to live you have this bad disease cancer or whatever you know or covid and you know all these kind of things so devotees take it in a very calm and composed way and say good it is a way for me to get detached from the material world now this is very high state totally agree this is much much easier said than done but we must learn to practice at least slowly to start getting detached and we gave an example earlier also so as soon as maharaj parikshit heard this he said okay i am giving up everything he um enthroned janme jay his son janme jay maharaj who was also a very capable son uh, uh, of parikshit maharaj very capable very good he installed him on the throne and went and set uh, and went to the river ganges the ganga river and sat down at the bank of the ganga and said that i will focus my mind on krishna these seven days that i have left let me focus my mind on krishna because he said i am completely convinced that by focusing on the lotus feet of krishna i can get the that is the highest achievement that is the path for the highest achievement so and he goes there and he sits down and he says i am going to fast until my death no eating no drinking just exclusively focusing on krishna for these 7 days so in one moment you know in one moment as soon as he heard this news he made that decision that i am going to renounce so in it is possible renunciation complete renunciation is possible even in one moment and whenever we get to that part in the it's coming in second canto there is an uh, example that shukadev goswami gives to parikshit maharaj of king katwanga uh, we will not go into those details but that is another example he says you have 7 days at least you made the decision immediately but you still have 7 days katwanga maharaj didn't even have 7 days to live he had only a few minutes to live and in those few minutes he completely surrendered to krishna so the point or the learning here is that it is possible to surrender to krishna to completely submit ourselves to krishna the only thing that is needed is the right kind of impetus or the motivation we all think we have long life ahead very healthy wealthy life in our you know control and so what's the point uh, 
you know, actually we talked to some people and they said, hey, why I have to come to Bhagavad Gita class? Why I have to do read Srimad Bhagavatam? When I become old, then I can do it. So don't, don't call me again. So many people tell us like that. Don't call again. Okay, no problem. But uh, I, you know, nobody knows how long we have and, and all these things. So we should not, uh, we should not uh, postpone these topics. And what is missing in their case is that motivation. When doctor gives us death certificate, then immediately, oh my God, you know, I was hearing one. Anyway, long story. We have, a, I can tell so many stories. So we will. So um, anyway, so now he has sat down on the bank of the Ganga River, fasting until death and trying to focus on Krishna. And then this news spread, you know, this is King's news, the most the emperor and not just any emperor, Maharaj Parikshit, such a, um, a accomplished emperor, news spread very fast that this calamity has occurred. Our wonderful emperor is going to die. And all the people, all the great sages, all the rishis, deva rishis, uh, brahma rishis, raja rishis, it is explained. So many wonderful people started assembling there to support to meet Parikshit Maharaj and to support him in his last seven days. So very quickly, so many wonderful personalities gathered there. I will just tell you in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a long list given of the names of the personalities. They are the who's who, so to say, of the, of the spiritual, of the rishis, the who's who of that. Um, so rishis like Bhrigu Rishi, uh, you may not have heard the name of Bhrigu, but you definitely have heard the name of Vashishtha Rishi. He came. Uh, Vishwamitra Rishi. He came. Parashar Muni. He came. Bharadvaja Muni. He came. Maitreya Rishi came. And himself Vyasdev came, who had uh, compiled Bhagavatam. He also came. And to top it all, uh, none other than Narad Muni, who is the transcendental, you know, uh, Rishi, the, the, the sort of the, the leader of all the Rishis, uh, Narad Muni also came there. And so this uh, immediately, this whole sort of, you know, uh, star studded uh, gathering uh, appeared there of the Rishis. And uh, Maharaj Parikshit told, he first of all welcomed very nicely every, each and every one of them. He uh, obviously knew each one. And he very, very humbly, uh, with a lot of respect, he bowed down, paid Dandavat Pranam, very nicely respected all of them and welcomed them and told him of his decision to fast until death. And, and, um, um, and in, 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 in um, you know, he conveyed to them that now I have seven days to live. Uh, I am completely surrendered to Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu. And he um, um, thanked them for coming there and said that, um, you know, you are, I'm so thankful to you. You are great sages. You uh, don't like to associate with kings and political class people. Generally, these political class people is supposed to be uh, rotten. But you have come here for my sake. So I thank you so much. And he confesses, I was too attached to material life, even though he was not. But he, this is his humility showing. He said, I was so attached to material life. Now I, I am taking this opportunity to get completely detached from all material life. And he said that uh, I want to uh, uh, die hearing the pastimes or the gatha of Lord Vishnu. The Sanskrit there uh, that is used is that Gayatam Vishnu Gatha. So Vishnu Gatha, uh, the, all the, uh, you know, Gatha means narrations of the activities of Lord Vishnu. Gayatam, please, uh, you please sing the activities. I will hear because you are also expert in singing the activities of Lord Vishnu. Please let me hear these activities. And then he says another wonderful thing, very wonderful thing. 
uh, again, in interest of time, we won't uh, recite the verse. By the way, if any of you are interested in reciting the verse, please contact me. This is a wonderful opportunity to read Srimad Bhagavatam, to recite it nicely in meter in the given way. You know, Srimad Bhagavatam is, is so sweet and so uh, also, you know, endowed with spiritual potency that simply by reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, your heart will become pure. So please take this opportunity, contact me if you would like to recite some verses. I can give you two, three verses to recite. Um, uh, and, and, you know, you can prepare and uh, you can recite those. Um, so anyway, so uh, this is the 16th verse of this chapter 19, where Parikshit Maharaj says that if ever, I, if I am to take next life, after I die, if I get another human life, what would I want in that human life? And this is absolutely beautiful. Very, very touching the heart. He says, I want three things. I want three things in my next life. If I am to get a human life, if I get a next life. First of all, he says, Bhagavati Ananta Rati. Bhagavati Ananta Rati. Rati means attachment. And Bhagavati means to Lord Krishna. So I want complete, Ananta means complete attachment to Lord Krishna. So please grant me a life of complete attachment to Krishna. Next, he says that prasangaha tat ashrayeshu. That ashraya, ashraya means taking shelter. So prasanga means sangha or prasanga means association, sangha. So I want the association of those who have taken shelter of Krishna. Tat Ashrayeshu means the Tat is referring to the previous line, which is Bhagavati. So those who have taken shelter of Krishna, which means the devotees of Krishna. So first thing he asks is that I want to have complete attachment to Krishna. Then I want the association of the devotees of Krishna. That's the second thing he asks. And it's not just all, okay, I just care about Krishna and not about others. The third thing he says is, Maitri astu sarvatra. Maitri means friendly. Let me be friendly to all living entities, sarvatra. So very friendly to all living entities. If you look at the Bhagavad Gita, 12th chapter, which we read uh, recently, the last verse, he says that my devotees are friends with everyone. Even the 55th verse of 11th chapter, he says that uh, my pure devotees are friends with everyone. So devotees are not like, you know, with a chip on the shoulder. Oh, I am devotee. You are rascal. And uh, you are some, you know, down, uh, downtrodden person. If, uh, you know, I am, I am the great devotee and you are a, uh, you should worship me because I am devotee. No, they are very friendly. They are very humble. So he says that, let me get this kind of a life. And then all the sages, demigods who had come there, they praised Parikshit Maharaj, they appreciated him. And all the sages said, we will wait here. We will wait here till you leave the world. So two, there were two reasons for that, for their saying this, the sages. And this is beautiful. Why did the sages say we will wait here till you leave the world? Of course, the first reason is that they wanted to support their wonderful king, the king or emperor of the whole world. Parikshit Maharaj was the emperor of the whole world. That time there was no India and, uh, you know, America or anything. Everything was under the rule of Parikshit Maharaj. So he was the emperor of the whole world and that too a wonderful emperor. So to support him. But the second reason is that they knew that Srimad Bhagavatam is going to be spoken very soon. And they did not want to lose that opportunity to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And that's the picture we will, uh, I wanted to show this picture now. Um, you must have seen this picture so many times in the slides that we shared. Hmm, where is my mouse? Ah, so you must have seen this uh, This picture, you can see Parikshit Maharaj and you can see Sukadev Goswami 
sitting there, but all these sages are also there. So they are assembled because they know that Parikshit Maharaj is going to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from a very, very elevated person. So, um, so I, I'll keep this uh, sharing on. So then Parikshit Maharaj. So, so hold on. Don't, don't look at this picture right now. Or, or we haven't come to this picture right now. So then Parikshit Maharaj. So they all said that we will stay here because they knew that the Srimad Bhagavatam is going to get spoken. So Parikshit Maharaj asks them, you know, this is another very, very sweet verse. He asks them two questions all to all the sages and all the rishis. So he says that I want to, first of all, I want to hear the activities of Vishnu that we had discussed earlier. Gayatam Vishnu Gatha. Again, he uh, uh, reiterates that, that Shrinu Shama Shasha Charitani Vishnu. So Shrinu Shama Shasha Shamashana uh, Charitani Vishnu Charita Charita means uh, the activities, the nature, all the things about Lord Vishnu. I want to Shrinu. I want to hear. So and then um, he says, please also tell me what is the way in which everybody should live their life. Uh, what is the duty of a person in any and all circumstances? Basically, it means how to live your life. So how to live. And he said, also, I want to hear what is the duty of a person who is about to die. So he knows he's about to die. So he says, what is the duty of a person who is about to die? So which basically means how to live and how to die. These are the questions that Parikshit Maharaj puts towards the sages. Now there is a more elaborate discussion given in uh, other commentaries and, and elsewhere that the sages were unable to agree upon who should be the one who should uh, instruct Parikshit Maharaj because they were looking at each other and everybody was greater than the other. Like I said, there was like a who's who of the sages who were assembled there and there was sort of no clear consensus that, okay, you should go and have the discussion with him. We will all listen. They all did not want to have like, you know, like a bombarding of, then it would be confusion. So it didn't want to be like everybody talking to Parikshit Maharaj at the same time. One person should talk, but who was the one who should talk? Now comes the, now comes this picture, what you see on the screen, entry of Shukadev Goswami. So this entry of Shukadev Goswami occurs and he, uh, just happens to be there. He is uh, Parikshit Maharaj. Uh, so we will come there. So he comes there and he is a complete renunciate. As you can see, he doesn't even have any clothes. And uh, he is just completely, and he's not bothered because he, he is a complete Paramahamsa. He does not associate himself with his body. So uh, he does not think this, I am this body. So whether the body is covered or the body is naked doesn't matter. He's a complete Siddha, complete self-realized person. And he arrives there and he is just 16 years old. And uh, he is the son of Vyasadev. And uh, his body is effulgent. So much brightness, so much energy is coming from the body of Shukadev Goswami. And it is described that he was looking just like Lord Krishna. Of course, we never see Lord Krishna without any clothes. But uh, uh, in the terms of his the, the bodily, the brightness, the, the luster of his body, and even the color of his body was bluish black, just like Lord Krishna. And all the sages knew who this person is. So as soon as they saw Parikshit Maharaj, all the sages, they got up. They had all sit, sat down. They all got up and, you know, the sages are old in age. And uh, Pari, uh, Shukadev Goswami is just 16 years old. Even then, they all paid their honor. They bowed down. They paid Dandavat Pranam to Shukadev Goswami. So uh, imagine this, you know, how much they all were happy to see the arrival of Shukadev Goswami. And Maharaj Parikshit also 
got up and bowed down to him and it is written in the shrimad bhagavatam that all the sages had surrounded so i have another picture uh, you know you've seen this picture long for long enough another picture so it was like all the sages were surrounding parikshit maharaj so parikshit maharaj was looking like a moon within all the stars like a bright moon among the stars and therefore the stage was set all the rishis agreed that wow this is the person we have found this is the person who should speak the you know transcendental topics which happens to be called shrimad bhagavatam this is the person who should guide parikshit maharaj in his last days so maharaj parikshit uh, very 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 beautifully glorifies shukadev goswami i know we are running little bit over time but uh there is a very important learning here to be had uh how should householders um uh, in um welcome saints this is the learning to be had so you know sometimes when saints come to the house of householders how should they be welcomed and this is given in verse numbers 32 to 34 so let's just read i will read the translations of these three verses 32 33 and 34 the fortunate king parikshit said so and again the learning here is for all of you to see how to welcome a saint in your house if you get such a fortune that's why the word is used fortunate the fortunate king parikshit said o brahmana by by your mercy only you have sanctified us making us like uh making us like unto places of pilgrimage so you have converted our body into a place of pilgrimage basically and uh, or all by your presence here as my guest by your mercy we who are but unworthy royalty become eligible to serve the devotee so we are uneligible we are unqualified to serve the saints but still we should serve the saints their presence itself purifies us next verse simply by our remembering you our houses become instantly sanctified and what to speak of seeing you touching you washing your holy feet and offering you a seat in our home just as the atheist cannot remain in the presence of the personality of godhead so also the invulnerable sins of man are immediately vanquished in your presence o saint o great mystic so he's saying as soon as we see a mystic or a saint all the sins get vanquished so this is the mood with which one should welcome a saint and then he says it is the divine will of krishna i was looking for a person to guide me and you just happened to come there so shukdev goswami did not come there knowing that parikshit maharaj is going to die so let me go there he was complete renunciate he didn't have anything to do but by the divine arrangement of krishna he just happened to be there other saints came there with that agenda shukdev goswami just happened to reach there and so Shuk- uh, parikshit maharaj says just when i needed you most you came so like that he 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 prays to a uh, request shukadev goswami and he puts those same two questions again what is the way in which one should live his life and what should be the way in which one should leave his life so how to live and how to die and then he asks what should one hear when he is living and about to die what is the best thing to hear what is the best thing to speak what is the best thing to remember and who is the best one to worship so he asks these four questions and if you see or think about it these four questions hear speak remember and worship are corresponding to the uh, four uh, very important uh, methods of bhakti yoga shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam and archanam or bhajanam so this is what he requests from shukadev goswami and this brings us to the end of canto 
like you saw chapter 19 was the last chapter of canto 1 and so i'll just scroll up here and show you canto 1 and we were looking at chapter 19 appearance of shukadev goswami so shukadev goswami has appeared now in front of parikshit maharaj and then canto 2 begins so this is the ending of our of our uh, discussion today and uh, from then on shukadev goswami and Parikshit Maharaj sit down and the Katha or the narration of Srimad Bhagavatam begins. So, uh, you know, this is the history. So in our Bhagavad Gita classes and many other places, we keep discussing Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam. Now you know that how Srimad Bhagavatam came to be, what happened before that, that caused the Srimad Bhagavatam to be spoken. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is basically the answer to fundamentally these questions. How to live one's life and how to leave one's life. And in that duration, what to speak, what to hear, uh, who to remember and who to worship. So these are the questions that Parikshit Maharaj has posed. And basically, in essence... I mean, of course, there are many, many, many wonderful topics in Srimad Bhagavatam. But at an essence level, this is the, the entire Srimad Bhagavatam is a answer at a high level to these things. And within that answer comes thousands of stories, thousands of uh, history, not stories in that sense, but histories and philosophy and learnings for our life and how we can get a chance to see how devotees apply the principles of Bhagavad Gita in their life so that we can learn from them. Okay, so that's the ending of today. Are there any uh, comments or questions or any, any you know, anything like that? Maybe you should provide to, to a question directly sent to you. If you could. I can't hear you, Prabhuji. Prabhu, uh, I sent a question directly to you, Prabhu. If you could. Um, oh, you sent a question? Yes, Prabhu. Okay, let me look. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, in the meantime, anybody else while I'm looking? Who gave Parikshit Maharaj his name? So this we had discussed last time. I, The various rishis that had assembled... Uh, they gave the name as Parikshit because they could foretell. They knew that when Parikshit Maharaj was in the womb, I don't know the name of the exact Rishi that gave the name, but they had all assembled, the saints had assembled there and they gave the name. Because they could see or they knew through their, you know, the saints are very, very uh, accomplished. They know that in the womb, Parikshit Maharaj saw the uh, the face of Lord Krishna or he saw Lord Krishna saving him from Brahmastra. Ah, the question uh, you are asking is, could you define sadhu or saint? Uh, usually people have a vague or wrong idea of who a sadhu is, thinking that just putting a saffron cloth makes a sadhu. So yes, sadhu, very nice question and uh, very important for a lot of people. Sadhu doesn't mean just, you know, external appearance. And we can have a long discussion on how to know who is a sadhu. But one who is completely at the basic level, external appearances come secondary. The character and the consciousness of the person matters the most. That is the primary characteristic or the, the, the angle to look at. And that consciousness of a person should be completely Krishna conscious. So one should uh, uh, be able to see that this person is 100% Krishna conscious. Now that brings us to the point, you should know what is Krishna conscious. You may not be Krishna conscious, but you should know what is the meaning of Krishna consciousness at least. So that you can see whether this person, like Srila Prabhupada used to give an example, that to be able to identify a diamond, you need to be a, a jeweler or somebody who has the experience. A, if you take a diamond and a piece of glass to a, to a 
normal you know stranger or a novice he will not be able to make out the difference of what is which one is diamond which is glass only a experienced jeweler he can easily make out the difference so therefore one should that's a long answer but the fundamental or the basic answer is a krishna conscious person at heart and it shows through his activities and if you know even little bit that how, what is a krishna conscious person it can be visible you spend some time with a person you can get a feeling that is this person really uh, you know or is there a tinge of tinge of uh, anything you know pride or you know whatever you know uh, anything uh, you you can detect and still we should not berate or anything we should see does this person in a large part exhibit krishna consciousness to that extent one can take learnings from them but to a pure devotee a bhagavata is a complete pure krishna conscious person he will not demonstrate even one quality which is uh, which is at a material level or have anything so you can read chapter 12 of bhagavad gita and the last eight verses very nicely describe verse number 13 to 20 describes the qualities of a devotee and you can you can identify in chaitanya charitamrita uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu gives another very wonderful quality of a pure devotee he says just by being in the presence of a pure devotee you feel krishna consciousness you begin to speak the name of krishna the bhakti of krishna begins to take place in your heart when you are simply in the presence of the other person so again this is a higher level of uh, you know reciprocation or that feeling but that is uh, another meaning given but it is all about being a krishna conscious person purely krishna totally fully krishna conscious person is a saint not somebody who just wears saffron clothes say alag niranjan or whatever you know you hear in all these hindi movies not they are all you know 99% of the people who will claim to be sadhus at least in kali yuga most likely will not be and by the way any person who claims i am a pure devotee of krishna that's the first red flag no pure devotee of krishna will claim i am pure devotee like look at parikshit maharaj he said i am such a for a small sin he was expecting such a big calamity he says what a great sin i have committed i am so attached to material life thank you that this calamity has come upon me so that is the mood of pure devotee so there are ways which we can find out hopefully that was a reasonable answer japu thank you so much amazing answer okay so we have gone way past our time any other burning questions or comments if not okay so pri prabhu ji i i just i just have a question uh, I'm, i might actually be repeating but i really enjoyed listening to uh, last class you mentioned that uh, even in kali uh, the benefit of i mean like the benefit or like the reward that we can get something on the lines of uh, you know if we if we do goodness uh, if we are good that goodness can, comes back uh, very easily in kali yuga can you please repeat that uh, uh, can you please repeat that for my better understanding prabhu ji yeah it's a very very important verse and i can i probably also show it it was one of uh, the important verses of um, uh, our discussion so this is uh, i'm showing this on the screen and the meaning in short is that in all other yugas whether you think of a good or bad activity or whether you do it you still get the reaction okay so in other yugas satyuga treta yuga dwapar yuga if you just think of something bad to another person towards another person you get some reaction of course when you do something bad you definitely get the reaction but even if you think you also get some negative reaction simply for the offense that you have done through your mind in other yugas here in kali yuga the benefit is that by thinking you can only get the reaction of good thoughts okay 
but for bad thoughts you have to or for bad things you have to actually do them to get negative reaction so basically your thoughts of doing something bad of some sinful activity attracts zero negative reaction that is because in the kali yuga our minds are so uncontrolled if we are supposed to start getting negative reaction for bad thoughts that come into our mind our case is a gone case no no hope for us so in kali yuga this is the special benediction given by the arrangement of how the yugas work how the law of karma works that in kali yuga by thinking you get no reaction for sinful thoughts but for good thoughts whether you think or you act you get the good reaction so this is such a discount you are getting in kali yuga this discount is not available in any other yuga and you can read the purport that wonderful purport shila prabhupada has written on this verse 1.18.7 hopefully that answers the question thank you thank you very yes prabhuji thank you very much prabhuji very much in lines of krishna consciousness that's how i'm like looking at this uh, yes. verse lord krishna has made kal in especially in kali yuga the standard very low very easy he is giving us all the reasons to pursue krishna consciousness so we must seriously take on krishna consciousness bhakti yoga and try to make the best use of the remaining part of our life okay thank you very much sorry we went little not little bit lot over so uh, please forgive me and we will see you next time i'll pick another topic most likely the topic will be the other side of the history of shukadev goswami and his history so we heard the history of parikshit maharaj we will i think that's the topic mm-hmm. i will pick up about shukadev goswami and then after that we will talk about other topics in shrimad bhagavatam about the topics that these two great personalities discussed so mm-hmm. most likely we will talk about shukadev goswami next time thank hare you krishna. so much hare krishna. krishna thank you hare krishna thank you guruji thank you hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna